Welcome to Victor George Leather Goods YouTube Knife Sheath School Volume 4. Today I'm going to show you the complete design, pattern, and fabrication steps that you'll need to build this classic Buck 119 scabbard yourself. Everything that you need to know to make this will be in this video. So let's start first of all by taking a look at this sheath. It is um, a scabbard style sheath, but what makes it unique is that it has an integral safety strap built into the design. So let's get started, show you how we do it. Let's take a quick look at the Buck 119 direct from the factory in its mass produced sheath. So the first thing I notice is that the blade is visible at the throat of the sheath and we have a loose fit. That knife just rattles in there. Additionally, we have metal hardware that uh, will make contact with the knife handle and in no time that knife handle will become marred. So all in all for a factory mass produced sheath, it's not too bad, but we definitely don't want to, uh, to have one of these. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sheath that we made for this video. So this is the classic Buck 119 scabbard in all its beauty and um, the integral safety strap we're going to design into the build and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let's uh, start the pattern process and I, I would actually recommend that you watch uh, volume one and three which are other scabbard patterns and how I establish my welt. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of cardstock and uh, make sure it's a perfect 90 degree edge, place it along the edge of your bench and trace out the blade shape. Once you have that, um, then you'll make a half inch seam allowance. I like a half inch because um, it gives you the option of a double row stitching and it's a little bit beefier in my opinion. So anyway, this is how I do it with the shadow line effect on volume one and three. I show you how I do that. Establish that however you like. So once you get that, you mark your dead center at the top of the sheath face and you cut it out of the pattern piece. Now take a four by, uh, in this particular case, I think it's about 18 inches long. You don't really need much for that. But to establish the center line of the sheath, like I've showed you before, is you butt this center point directly up onto that edge on the center line. And then wherever this sheath falls on that center line, you draw a mark there. And then it's nothing more than connecting those two lines. And again, we get this measurement with um, self-centering ruler. Okay, once we have that, we'll take our, our four by 18 sheet of poster board cardstock and we'll set the knife onto that. Match up the center lines and trace around the pattern. And the nice thing about this, uh, this particular one here is you don't really need to trace the whole knife onto paper. You can get away with this pretty easy based on your measurements and calculations for the blade that you're using. So once we have that, then I, as previously have shown, from the two corners of the top of the sheet, we're gonna go straight up using this line as a guide. Lined up really nicely. It does take a little bit of a moment. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same to the other side. Like I said, you've seen this before. And we're gonna take it, all these, all these lines have to match up to make sure it's perfectly perpendicular. All right, once we have that, based on this knife, I'm gonna take a two inch wide ruler and I'm gonna establish four two inch blocks. 
And again, just keeping your lines together. Because if you're off a hair on one of these lines, then everything will be off. So once we have these four blocks, all of this is excess and we can get, not worry about that. All right, so once you have that, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, from the, this is a right-hand strong sheath. On this side of the sheath, we're gonna establish basically a three-quarter inch line all the way up to the top. Now on the one that I have here, I did a 5 eighths line. I think I can get away with uh, another eighth of an inch. So I will just mark up here. That's gonna be, that's gonna be our safety strap. And uh, we'll cut that um, to fit here in just a little bit. Now take your pattern on the first block on this side here, opposite of that safety strap, and we're gonna do what you've seen me do before. And we're gonna go first and third. And if you match them up in the corners when you fold it at this half halfway point, um, it'll be a perfect inside cut on both of them. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to split the center block to my fold back. Okay, this final block here will all be skived to feather. The safety strap part here. Don't worry about that yet because when you cut this to leather, we're going to cut everything in rectangular and then we'll cut it later. If you'll notice uh, on this one here, I established a three and three quarter inch safety strap and it's just not long enough. So we're going to do, we're going to do a four and a quarter, but we'll show you that in the uh, future uh, project. So this right here is your pattern for an integral loop knife scabbard. Let's go ahead and cut this out and then I'm going to cut it to leather and we'll show you how we build this. So let's talk a little bit more about this uh, pattern. Now what we did here with our uh, four two inch blocks, the center line for the fold over and uh, what I usually like to do is I like to have that fold over just below the pommel in this particular case. So it's right at where the edge of that silver line um, uh, next to the wood starts. That works for me. And um, as I can see here, that everything looks like it's uh, working correctly based on our pattern and I'm satisfied. So to cut the pattern out, use a sharp knife. Always try to split the ink line on your pattern and um, that'll give you a good guide. And um, also the orientation for this. I always cut my patterns out on the grain side of leather. And um, on this particular uh, face pattern, the working edge of the blade is to the right. So that tells me that it's for a right-handed sheath and reverse, of course, for a lefty. But anyway, that will be placed onto the grain side of the leather, traced out with an ink pen and cut out. On the back strap, which is gonna fold into itself like this, um, you have to reverse the pattern. So reverse the pattern and then mark it somehow so that you know if you're cutting it out on the grain side that this is the correct side up for that. Once you have that, Let's go ahead and cut it to leather. And um, there's um, been a couple of comments about cutting leather, and it's something that you're just gonna have to, to learn how to do um, through practice and experience. So any of these straight edges on your pattern, 
Um, you can use a steel ruler to help you keep that, um, that line straight. Use a sharp knife, also split the ink line, and then once you get it cut out, um, there is no harm or foul in taking a salon board or a nail file and just truing up your edges, your curves, and uh, clean up so that you have a nice uh, 90 degree edge, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Now we have th this on leather. Of course, we're gonna have to cut a welt piece as well, and I'll show you that in a minute. But the first thing that I do is I turn my sheath in the correct orientation. I place this, match it perfectly to that back strap, and then I take a little ink pen and right at the top of the sheath, in about a three quarter inch uh, distance, I just mark myself a little ink point. And from this ink point up three quarters of an inch, this is gonna be our strap. So now that we have this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, edge from the first inside curve here all the way around. And, um, and I'm gonna do the same basically from um, this point up on both sides. And uh, we don't have to do anything with this. However, if you want to establish your decoration, your basket weave, your um, uh, any geometric pattern that you want, now, of course, is the time to do that. So I'm gonna do a couple of steps off camera and uh, then I'll come back and I'll show you where we're at. Let's do a fabrication progress report. So what I did on the back strap is I went ahead and edged both sides um, with an edger and I, I did that to the inside curves and uh, then I went ahead and burnished it with a little bit of moisture and then I dyed it and reburnished it again. So I did that on both sides. Of course, once this is folded into itself, you won't be able to get to those. So good time to do it now. Also on the back strap from that uh, little ink dot, I went ahead and measured. This is basically in between 5 eighths and 3 quarters of an inch. And uh, I went ahead and punched a hole there because wherever a straight line ends or a straight line cut ends, um, you want to put a little hole there so that it doesn't keep tearing out. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut this line out that I marked and just use that uh, wing divider as a guide and do a couple of strokes. You don't have to cut it through all in one. And also this leather is not the best because... Um, on my, on my videotape mock-ups like this, I usually use a little bit less of a, of a prime leather so that I don't use up all my, all my prime stuff. So anyway, now you've cut it and this will become your safety strap. Of course, um, we're gonna do a couple more steps to that, which I will show you. Now we have the safety strap cut out and uh, let's talk about the sheath face before we get onto that. I went ahead and established my stitch line. Now remember with a half inch welt, do one or two rows of stitching. For um, a, a little bit of a, a faster pace here, I went ahead and did a single row and uh, I went ahead and used my pricking irons. These are five mils. I got these as a set from uh, Maker's Leather Supply. I think they were around 50 bucks for a four piece set. I think it was beautiful little tools and uh, cost effective. I went ahead and also laid out a welt piece. I marked or I traced it on with the pattern and I laid the knife, laid the knife dead center, established my lines around the blade itself. This is gonna be my plug. And again, cut another hole where those two sharp points meet up for uh, two purposes. Number one, it won't tear, and it gives that blade tip a little place to seat. All right, so now we have our face, our welt, and our back strap. And also uh, marked from the inside curve down, 
This is all going to be skived. You can do that with a French edger, a skive, or a skiving knife, however you choose to do that. If I were to show you every single step of this process, this uh, video would be hours long and even I wouldn't be willing to sit through all that. So I'm assuming that you have some basic leather craft skills and uh, that's where we're at with that. All right, now on the face of the sheath, of course, if you want to basket weave that or, or uh, any carving or any other decorations, on this one here that I made earlier, I went ahead and made a little decorative patch where I'm gonna set my uh, 24 line stud. And the reason for that, of course, is that, so it's not on the inside of the sheath where it'll um, mar the blade itself. On this one, I'm gonna show you a different method. And uh, what that is, is just a little round piece of leather and it's gonna be sewn to the face like that that's where the safety strap eventually is going to be uh, connected to. Now, the way I do this, this happens to be a 15 16th inch circle. I think a one inch is a little bit big, but I do have a one inch punch. Of course, that would be easy to slam it out. But what I, I do is um, I take a template. You can get it literally anywhere. And I found a 5 16 inch circle. I don't have a punch for that. So I marked it out with an ink line, and then I used a washer to find as close to center where that stud's gonna be as I can. Of course, we're gonna punch that out. Now, here's a little uh, something that you can use. If you're familiar with a P38 can opener, and uh, let me break and get my tool that I need to cut this with, and we'll continue. If you're familiar with a P38, this is basically my P38 chiseled screwdriver. So I take it and I file it to a chisel point and it's polished and it's razor sharp. If you don't have a punch for your circle, just take this little P38 screwdriver and just walk around the circle like this. Cuts about an eighth of an inch with every pass and uh, that's an easy way to do something as difficult to cut out as a little circle if you don't have a punch. So once you do that, then you take your punch, of course, and you prepare this for um, your snap. Now I'm going to show you how I um, unorthodoxly, is that a word? I make this true round and how I burnish this little circle. And uh, this clip that you're about to see is how I do it. So here's how I get a nice true round on my um, little uh, sander. And uh, it's unorthodox. I'm not too embarrassed to show you. So this is how I do it. Okay, that sands it and uh, makes it nice and round, gives it a nice 90 degree edge, and it's all set to burnish. So then I take a little bit of moisture, I moisten that, and then I do the same thing on my uh, burnishing wheel. Let me change that out real quick. Back at it. The spinning of that little circle burnishes itself um, to me, it's just a lot easier. All right, so now all I have left to do is uh, dye the circle, uh, establish my stitch line, and set the snap, and uh, it's ready to be mounted onto the sheet. Let's do uh, another little progress report. So I went ahead and uh, finished this um, small little snap attachment on a round circle. I tack that onto the leather um, with uh, Type Bond number two, premium wood glue. This stuff is a great tack and hold product for leather, wood, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I place it on there and I set it down there. A few minutes later, I can go ahead and, and all out my holes and sew that up. I used a, uh, I think a 0.8 uh, thread size for that. I'll use a 1.0 on here. But anyway, that is set up.
I cut out the plug for my for my welt, and as you can see, it fits nicely in um, that. I will glue that to the face here in a minute. Now on this uh, piece right here, I went ahead and cut a little bit of the extra off. Um, this is still excess. I'm a little gun shy from um, when I did this one here and I cut myself a little bit short. So I cut some of that off. Um, I went ahead and edged in between here, these two straps with an edger, and uh, then I burnished and dyed it, and um, it's coming along pretty nicely here. So I skived that to feather, I established the fold over, and uh, I'm gonna tack that together. So let's go ahead and do that here real quick. I went ahead and folded that into itself. Make sure your inside curves line up. Make sure the edge matches. And we're going to just sort of prepare that for the final step. As you can see, the uh, convex head hammer. We're gonna go ahead and and uh, prep that for the final assembly. Okay, all systems are go. I'm happy with everything. I don't think I've forgotten anything. We'll go ahead and put our face onto our welt, and um, and then that's it. Let's go ahead and do that. It was drying. I wanted to just share a couple more things with you. <clears throat> First of all, before I put the welt on here, I edged just the inside in between the... Um, welts. I edged and dyed that. That'll be an area that'll be hard to get to. And once we put the welt on, eventually it'll all be sanded uh, flush. I took the inside corners of the welt and I clipped them. And uh, then I just went ahead and colored them because that'll be hard to get to later as well. They both have two coats of contact cement, um, which really will help you bite. This is all prep ready for the welt to be put onto the sheath face and uh, trimmed and sanded. And then the next step will be to uh, glue the sheath face and welt onto the back piece. Find out where we're gonna put the snap and uh, should be done shortly after that. All right, so I went ahead and sewed the sheath face onto the body. We are at the final stages now. I used a 60 and a 150 grit flap wheel to get the initial shape. And um, off camera, I'm gonna do my 220 through 800 probably. And uh, I'll show you that in a minute, <clears throat> excuse me. But I went ahead and moistened it. And the reason for that is to get the initial fit of the blade. So I'm gonna take my uh, plastic bone folder and I'm gonna open up the throat of the sheath just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the knife and I'm gonna place it in there and it goes nice and smooth. We're gonna shove that thing down in there into its final resting position. And then we're gonna take the strap and uh, uh, we're gonna place it over the thick part of this um, half guard or guard. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it down on there. I'm gonna pull it, pull it snug. And I'm gonna center it over that snap. Just give myself a little mark. And um, that's where I will eventually place my cap snap. And I think on this one, I'm gonna use a nickel snap. And, um, and of course, we're gonna trim off the ex excess tail wherever we, we want it. Um, and I think we are good. Now, I'm also, I'm gonna let that knife, you know, sort of uh, um, mold itself into that sheath. And I'm really happy with how that fits. And uh, I think it came out okay. All right, so let me uh, show you one other thing that I'm gonna do for beautification. And uh, that is, if um, if it's just plain 
One of the things that I like to do around my stitch line is use my wing dividers, and then I basically will go in between the edge and the stitch line, and with the leather slightly moist, it'll take a nice deep impression. Now I have sanded the tips of these wing dividers with some thousand grit so they don't cut in and so they just establish a groove. Now they have tools of course for this, um, but if you're just starting out, these wing dividers will do what you need. And just run them over that a couple of times until you get the depth that you want. And then you take the wing dividers and you go again on the inside of the line. And you do that to the depth that you want. And that pretty much is it. When I come back, I will have this sanded and uh, burnished to 800 grit. I will have set the snap and cut the um, strap. I'll probably leave it about an inch or so from the um, cap hole. And I may cut it round or I may cut it uh, pointed. It really doesn't matter at this point. So anyway, I'll come back for the final. All right, this is the final uh, sheath all done from all the steps that we just went over. Uh, the edges are sanded to 800 and waxed burnished. The sheath has been airbrushed just for color, no um, fades or anything like that. Airbrush does make it easy to get a nice coat, a light coat, and dries within about 10-15 minutes. All right, it's been um, a lot of fun. Here's a close-up of the stud on that 15-16th piece of leather, the integral safety strap. There's enough sheath body here to cover the knife, all our decorative lines and tight stitches. And I think this'll pass. Locks in nice, good tight fit. And there you go, build one yourself. Well, this concludes volume four, Knife Sheath School from Victor George Leather Goods. And uh, I hope you were able to gain something uh, from this uh, particular build. Hope you can use it. Um, everything that I put out here on U YouTube is available for you to replicate, alter, use it as a foundation, and uh, let's continue to build some knife sheaths.